Hey guys, Steven here, Fanatic Perspective. Happy New Year. Want to talk about the All-American Under Armour game uh, that was last night. Team Pressure, led by Deion Sanders, uh, defeating Team Savage, led by uh, new Hall of Famer Ed Reed. So the Under Armour, so we have like the two major All-American Bowls for high school. You have the All, the Under Armour All-American game, and you have the U.S. Army All-American game, which is tomorrow in San Antonio. Uh, and so from a Texas perspective, we had four players uh, playing this game. Hudson Card, uh, Vernon Broughton, uh, Keaton Crawford, and Jake Majors at center. Uh, Jake Majors and Hudson Card uh, started on offense. Vernon Broughton on, uh, rotated on defense, and, and Keaton Crawford uh, got some snaps on, on Team Savage. So uh, also... Shout out to Bosses Ranch, our sponsor here. Wonderful product, H-E-B, cold produce, best darn ranch in Texas. Links to all their social media below. Guys, I was really, really excited to see our four guys play. Would have been uh, five if Quinton Jackson was healthy from Duncanville. Obviously, with the torn ACL, he wasn't able to participate in this game. Uh, but I'm going to get my thoughts on the Texas players first and then some other people that caught my attention real quick. But starting out, Hudson Card. Uh, you know, he, he's been, you know, he's been really underrated, in my opinion. Now, from a national perspective, he's not. He was, I think, the number four ranked dual threat quarterback in the country. Uh, led his team to the state semifinal before they got uh, removed by North Shore. And um, he's been a guy who's a product of the Lake Travis system. Somebody who I've watched here very closely um, as he transitioned from wide receiver to quarterback after, after the graduation of Matthew Baldwin. And um, he is somebody who I'm very, very excited to, to see his development. Um, he's, you know, recently, I think after, when I say recently, I think after this game and everyone's excitement of, of seeing how easily he throws the football and how he was able to move the offense, doesn't seem to panic graded very well in practices just like he graded very well at elite 11 and as somebody who's just a natural thrower of the football even going back to when we recruited a Shane Bouchelle and it was just easy for him and somebody who graded well at all these camps with their natural accuracy you see some of those traits from Hudson Card the thing with Hudson Card is he's a very very good athlete uh, he was a very very good wide receiver and you see those movement skills speed mobility in and out of the pocket uh, but in the pocket he, he, he has a quick trigger, gets rid of the football, very, very accurate. You saw that accuracy on display, uh, led his team, I believe, to, to what, uh, 10 or 17 points uh, yesterday in the game and, and was just um, everything was, was on the money on time and, and moves very, very well. So, you know, we talk about who's going to take over after Sam, Casey Thompson, Roshan Johnson, Jaquindon Jackson, Jalen Milrow, like all these names you hear about. And, and I feel like Hudson Card's name doesn't get brought up enough, uh, but he is going to be in the mix. He's going to be an early enrollee uh, and somebody I'm excited to see develop in a Mike Yersich offense, especially since he was somebody who he tried to recruit at Oklahoma State. Uh, another Texas signee that jumped off the screen for us. Vernon Braun made a few plays last night. Sorry, the pup's uh, moving around. Vernon Braun, uh, defensive tackle, played defensive end a little bit yesterday. 6'5", 280, just moving all over the place. And you see some of the athleticism with him. There was a screen pass, or I don't know if it was a screen or outside zone, but he immediately you know, gets off his block, gets downhill, and makes a tackle. I think it was his own read, actually, where he, where he hit the quarterback that's going. Uh, where's that brother going? The one that came out of Hoover. I forget where he's going, but uh, I think he's going to Oregon. But he hit that kid coming off a block, and it was, you know, and you see him move around and physically, uh, you know, that whole defensive line on on uh, team pressure. And don't ask me. It's not like uh, U.S. Army American where it's East versus West. I don't know how they, they decide the teams for these brothers. I didn't look into it. But uh, the defensive line for on Deion Sanders' team, team pressure was ridiculous. Uh, and and, and – uh, Savelle Smalls, who's going to Washington, was, you know, he's a freak and was all over the place. The other brother, Roy, was all over the place. And then you have Vernon Broughton, too. Uh, and, and, and moving to whatever scheme we move to, we use a lot of 3-4, played a lot of multiple 
four three-man fronts in the Utah game for Texas and what Chris Ash wants to do, Vernon Brown's going to be able to play anywhere with his versatility. Curious to see what they do with his body, but I said this in our recruiting recap. I think he's somebody that can help us right away. It's very encouraging to see Jake Major start at center. Uh, some of the centers in the game on the other team had a lot of issues snapping the football. I didn't see any of that from Jake Majors. The holes that they created looked to be clean. Hard to really diagnose what was going on there, so I have to go back and, and you know look at hit some of his high school tape and whatnot. But he's another guy who will be an early enrollee. And I told you guys with a Zach Shackelford moving on, I don't expect Jake Majors to start right off the bat as a true freshman. But he, you know, with his natural experience at the position and, and just transitioning over, we did see Zach Shackelford start as a true freshman. He's got to put a little bit more meat on his bones for sure. But uh, encouraging to see Jake Majors start in an All-American Bowl with his future quarterback in a Hudson card. Uh, so that was really cool. And then Keaton Crawford out of John Tyler, who, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I keep raving about his athleticism and his natural build. He already looks like a grown man, nickel corner. And um, didn't, hear, didn't hear anything. I don't think anybody challenged him. Uh, and, and so no news is good news when you play the position he plays. Because uh, there were some brothers out there getting picked on, on on various teams, especially the brother that was guarding Julian Fleming in the second half that gave up the deep ball. That's tough. Uh, now, granted, Julian Fleming is one of the best high school players in the country, and that's going to be a problem <laughs> uh, uh, with him and Garrett Wilson and Olave and all those brothers at Ohio State with Justin Fields. That's going to be an issue. But uh, Julian Fleming, I mean, he is, he is as good as advertised, but – uh, luckily, we didn't see any of our Texas boys getting picked on like that. So, um, other people that – Smalls definitely caught my eye. I like the quarterback going to Notre Dame. Um, I, I, I can't I can't recall his name, but he was the one that threw the touchdown to, 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 to Julian Fleming. And I, I believe he was from Connecticut or somewhere from the Northeast. Shorter guy, has like that kind of like that Drew Brees build. I don't know if it was like Pike or Dylan Pike or something like that, but he, he I like the way he threw the football. He came in with a lot of confidence and seemed to give the team some juice. Um, and then we got it. We got to also we can't we can't go without mentioning the brother Zachary Evans, who was supposed to commit yesterday, decided not to. Uh, obviously, he had the drama with the fight with the coaches at the before the North Shore Duncanville State Championship game over the cell phone. They tell him they kick. They basically kick him off. And um, he doesn't play in the state title game, which is, the, you know, uh, from what I heard, some of the videotape was sent to his coaches, uh, whether he's deciding to go to Georgia, Alabama, LSU, I don't know. But I believe everybody got the videotape of the altercation and uh, horrible look for him. But what I was impressed with was hearing all the good stuff of how he practiced throughout the week. Uh, and then he had the interview with uh, Deion Sanders and, and the reporter there on ESPN, and he owned it. He, he stepped up like a man, uh, said he's been acting like an idiot. Uh, some of the stuff has gotten to his head. And, you know, some people on Twitter and social media have questioned uh, how genuine he came off and if he really means it and all those type of things. And, look, time will tell. He's a kid, uh, but he's an insanely talented kid. I know he's not coming to Texas, and I'm glad we ended up with B. John Robinson and, and we have our own stud in, in the mold. But... Zachary Evans is so special and has so much talent. Has been one of the all-time great high school players in Texas of this past decade. Fantastic player. It's all here. It's all from the neck up with him. And if he can figure that that piece out and reel it in, um, and maybe him being humbled in high school is better than being humbled when he gets to college, uh, then whatever school gets him, could have, a, you know, it's a high risk, high reward thing because he has that label on him right now. And it's going to take time to shake that off anytime you deal with labels with players. And anytime you hear anything with him, people are going to be like, you see, uh, he's a problem child. So he's got to shake that off. Uh, hopefully he's reconciled with his coaches and his teammates, even though he won't be playing football for them anymore. But just signs of good faith, good character. And, and moving on and, and seeing how coachable he'll be at the next level. Because even last night, he looked like one of the best players on the field amongst all-stars all over the place. Uh, so hopefully 
uh, he can get his head on straight because I want to see kids succeed. He's only 17, 18 years old, and I don't want to see brothers waste their gifts. Uh, but overall, I'm excited about our Texas guys. Tomorrow morning, I'll be doing another recap for the U.S. Army All-American Bowl in San Antonio. Uh, I'm excited to see uh, Prince Dorba, Bijan Robinson, who I mentioned earlier, uh, Andre Carrick, uh, and then who else do we got? Uh, I'm missing somebody. Keely Ringo. <laughs> I know I'm missing somebody on the... We have four guys in there. Oh, and Xavion Offer, but he's I, I, he's injured. I don't think he's going to play. Um, that's why that's why I didn't uh, bring him up. So it's kind of the same situation with Jaquen and Jackson. But excited to see those three guys, potentially four guys. Keely Ringo will, I believe he's announcing tomorrow. So we'll see. Keep our fingers crossed. Uh, I think it's between us and Georgia at this point. But whether he comes or not, Bijan Robinson, you know, he's going to be kind of the one that everybody's paying attention to. And then Prince Dorba, uh, seeing how he does against some of the best offensive linemen uh, in the country. You know, he was fantastic at Highland Park. What's he going to look like on this stage and, and, and seeing his skills translate? Because, again, natural pass rush ability, that's somebody who we're going to see right off the bat maybe featured in our defense next year, like I mentioned with the Vernon Broaden. So excited to see all three of those guys, hopefully four. But uh, I'll make another video recap and just some other players that catch my eyes tomorrow on the U.S. All-American Bowl. Uh, guys, horns always up.